November 18th, 2014. We've been working on this for a couple of days, my friends and I. We've been trying to put together a Five Nights at Freddy's timeline, taking into consideration that Five Nights at Freddy's 2 has been considered a prequel for the past couple of days. So far, we've been able to get a short timeline. It's not complete because there are still many plot holes that need to be figured out. Hopefully we'll have these figured in. However, what we have so far is that if Five Nights at Freddy's 2 came before the first game, there must have been something before it according to one of the messages on Five Nights at Freddy's 2. According to that message, there was a restaurant before it where they used the old suits before. Before Night 6 when you get the call saying that someone used the Golden Freddy suit and now none of the animatronics are acting right, everyone just considered, oh yeah, they closed down the one from the first game to make this new one. However, our theory is that at the original restaurant, that is when the five kids were actually killed. That is why the animatronics in the second game are still coming after you, even though they technically should not be. However, our working theory right now is that they weren't, they were taken apart. However, I'm sorry. I need to get my thoughts together. The two theories we have right now is that either A, they were taken apart to build the new ones, but the parts that they took apart from the old ones to make the ones from Five Nights at Freddy's 2 are in the new machines, but were also put in there along with some of the new technology that causes the um, facial rec recognition. Our other theory is that at the original restaurant, there were no animatronics. This theory has been accepted as canon in my group of friends. We say that they were actually just suits in the very beginning. They were just worn by the employees to walk around the company, like how at Chuck E. Cheese they have the man in the suit walk around and talk to all the kids. However, a man in the Golden Freddy suit lured four or five kids in the back and put them inside the suits. However, they were currently building the animatronics. So when he took certain parts of the kids and stuffed them inside the suit, it would be so no one would notice at that point. So they continued to build them without any knowing of what had happened. Now that covers what originally happened with the Golden Freddy suit. However, I will cover the plot holes later on why we need help on figuring this out. According to this timeline that we've made, after that came Five Nights at Freddy's 2, or the Grand Reopening. On night five, I'm sorry, on night six, when it says that the place is closed down because someone had moved the Golden Freddy suit, our theory is that it works like any possessed object. Messing with it will cause anything that is inhabiting a haunted place, it will disturb them and cause them to reactivate. Therefore, when they messed with the Golden Freddy suit on night six, none of them started to act right. They started to become more aggressive. This is when we believe night seven, we believe this is when the bite of 87 is meant to occur. However, we don't think Foxy is the one who did it. According to our hypothesis, we believe that Mangle is the one who caused the bite of 87 due to his death screen appearing to be that he's coming at you and it attacks the frontal part of your head. We believe that Mangle is the reason why they don't use the new ones anymore and they decided to scrap them. Now here's where things get interesting. Due to them scrapping the old animatronics, they wanted to rebuild the old ones or finish building them, whichever th that is, and depending on which theory you choose to believe. However, 
the reason that people thought Foxy was the cause of the bite of 87 is because of how he looked so flimsy. However, if you've noticed, all of the new animatronics, or old animatronics in this case, looked new, like they were freshly built and they all looked brand new. Except for Mangle. Now, if we take into consideration that they took apart the respective animatronics to rebuild the old or new ones, in this case, if they were going to take apart Mangle to rebuild Foxy, they would have not had enough parts to completely rebuild him, giving him his somewhat not very finished or broken appearance. That is all the evidence we have to support that it might not have been him that caused the bite of 87. Now, on to Five Nights at Freddy's. This is where the problems come in. We have a solid timeline on what could have happened between before Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and between Five Nights at Freddy's 2. But when we try to link that to the already existing lore of the first Five Nights at Freddy's, that's where things get tricky. So right now we only have little bitty theories on what could have happened. We'll start with the marionette. The character which seems to have a major role in why the animatronics are acting up. We believe that his part in this is bigger than it seems. The marionette, we believe, was designed to find any rooms where there was no noise or if kids were not having fun, and he would instantly go to that room to get them up and running. Our theory is that he somehow sensed the presence of the kids inside the animatronics in the back room, and then when he went back there, he got them up and running, so to speak. We believe that is how he supposedly gave them life. Now, if that's the case, you might be wondering, then why isn't he in the second game if he plays such a major role? We believe he actually is. Because if you take note in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which is considered a prequel now, there's only one cupcake, which is the one that Chica holds. Now, if the marionette just in theory is supposed to sense where people are and to be able to know where, we believe that he was built with certain parts that might have been seen, that might have been deemed as irreplaceable. So they decided to take him apart and build a spare cupcake which they decided to keep in the security office. I know at first that might not make sense, but if you decide to accept the theory where he's able to sense where you are, or he's like a camera of some sorts, it would connect to the possible theory that the way that the animatronics on the stage in the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, it would connect it to the theory on how the animatronics on the stage know exactly where you are and how to get past your defenses, because they have a man on the inside. Something else that confused us for a little while also is if that's the case, why where's everything else? However, at the end of night six, when you finally beat it, you get I mean it's either night six or five when you get a newspaper clipping saying that they will hope to reopen one day. However, certain budget cuts will have to be made. I would understand how they would be they would want to keep certain parts. However, due to not having the budget to have everything that they had before, especially since the newspaper clipping says that it had only been open for a short couple of weeks, our theory is that some animatronics are still in there somehow. However, we'll talk about that later. Right now, I want to focus on one of the main points that we could not find out. Why did they get rid of the costume that they provided for the security guard back in Five Nights at Freddy's 2? We believe that since budget cuts were made, 
they either A, did not have the money to afford it, or they decided to rather spend the budget on the security doors that are in the security office in Five Nights at Freddy's. And since they added the security go doors, they might have decided that you had no use for the mask anymore. Now back to certain animatronics, specifically the Balloon Boy. As of now, we have no evidence on where he could have gone. The only link that we've been able to find with him is that whenever he gets in your room on Five Nights at Freddy's 2, you can no longer check any of your lights. And in Five Nights at Freddy's, when any one of the animatronics gets in your room, you can no longer use the lights, which in retrospect would not make sense. Because if they were in your room, you, would, you should still be at least able to check your lights. But Balloon Boy, regardless of what's going on, you cannot check any of your lights. Which is the only connection we have right now. But until we get any more evidence or any backstory from Scott Calthorn, that's all we'll have. Something else that popped up in our timeline, strangely, is Golden Freddy. He seems to play a major role in it, but every time we tried to put him and the marionette in the same story, it never made sense. Like, we could say Golden Freddy, a man dressed up in that suit and lured the kids back there to kill them, and the marionette sensed the spirits of them and brought them back forever to haunt the place. But then, I'm sorry, let me start over. So we could say that a security guard dressed up in the Golden Freddy suit and lured five kids in the back, killing them, while the, anima the marionette somehow f sensed the presence of those kids and brought them back to life. As simple as it seems, we just couldn't weave that into one logistic story. Because we believe that the spirits of the kids, if the marionette brought them back to life, are they still trying to follow the security guard who was dressed up as the Golden Freddy? That would make sense if you notice how they become more aggressive and start heading towards your office more in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 on night 6 when you get the message saying that someone had messed with the Golden Freddy suit. However, he doesn't act like the rest. He doesn't walk in or have a normal death animation. He just fades in and fades out. So we have to question, is the suit real? I mean, there's plenty of evidence going towards the suit being real, but is the suit that you're seeing real? In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, People speculated that you were just hallucinating or seeing that costume, hallucinating about what your demise could end up being. But in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, when it's made extremely clear that someone you went in the back and used the suit, what could that actually mean? Disregarding any plot holes that might stick out, here is what we've been able to gather in a short, concise timeline. Sometime back in the 70s or 80s, a restaurant opened up called Fred Bear's Family Diner. It would seem that it wasn't open for very long after an incident happened where a security guard dressed up in one of the suits, lured four or five kids in the back and murdered them. The bodies were never recovered. They decided to close down for a bit, but in a couple of years they opened up a new chain called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where they had new animatronics supposedly retrofitted with facial recognition material, so it would be able to see any type of predator from a mile away. However, after only being open for a short couple of weeks, someone went in the back and tampered with the Golden Freddy suit 
which caused the animatronics to start being more aggressive. The reason the animatronics were being aggressive in the first place is that the marionette, which was one of the new animatronics, had sensed the presence of the kids in the back room and decided to get them up and running. However, when they were up and running, they could not find the security guard in the Golden Freddy suit anymore, so they, they walked around the place at night trying to find him so they could keep on following him. When someone tampered with it on night six, they knew exactly where to go to get their revenge. The very next day after night six, this is when the supposed bite of 87 happens, where Mangle, one of the animatronics, malfunctions supposedly and takes off a chunk of one of the kid's heads. This causes the restaurant to shut down for a long period of time, but they hope to reopen it using the old animatronics at that time. They decided to take apart the new ones that they had built so they could finish fixing up the old ones. However, since Mangle was not completely built, since kids were so destructive at the time, he was not completely fixed up. He was almost left almost as broken as Mangle, which caused him to not be a very popular attraction, therefore putting him out of order for a long period of time. When they reopened Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in a unspecified time later, this is when the new security guard, Mike, starts working the night shift. He is put in a new security office where he is told about the animatronics which have started to ooze mucus and blood since the animatronics have now been turned on and the kids and the kids body parts which are inside the suit have actually started reacting negatively to the animatronics movements. So now it's the night security's job to make sure they don't get out and do anything because since their facial recognition systems have deteriorated over time, they will see anyone as a metal endoskeleton that is out of costume. And after the events of Five Nights at Freddy's, the whole, all of the restaurants are eventually shut down for good. This is all that we've been able to come, with, come up with for right now. If you have any information that could help us come up, fill in any holes, like, do you believe Golden Freddy is real? What do you think happened to the marionette? Do you think that he became the second cupcake that's in the security office in Five Nights at Freddy's? Where is the balloon boy? What did they do with him? And do you think that Mango was the actual cause for the bite of 87? If you have any information, please write it down.